Hi everyone, my name is Ali Hill and I'm a DevOps consultant at a company called ECS. Today, I want to talk about my opinion that software testers should always aim to enable within their teams. And I'm going to talk about three ways testers can do this and share my experiences of carrying out these techniques myself. So I'm going to talk about three ways that testers can help to enable their teams. But to start off, I want to talk a bit about why I think this is important. Why should testers focus on enablement as well as testing the software that they're working on? And I want to refer to the modern testing principles created by Alan Page and Brent Jensen. The aim of these principles is to accelerate the achievement of shippable quality. Every role in the team should be focused on how to provide the best value to the customer. So as well as being amazing testers, we should always aim to help the team achieve that goal and provide value to customers. Often, this is provided by testing the product so that we can uncover new information or writing automated tests that provide fast feedback to the team. But we can also look at achieving this goal at a higher level. So I'm gonna share my experiences with helping our, my team accelerate the achievement of shippable quality. And I've done this in three main ways in the past. First of all, I've helped to discover uh, flaws in the process and aim to improve these. Secondly, I've worked with developers to identify problems in our code or in our design as early as possible. And third, I've shared my testing knowledge with the team so that we can build quality at source. I'm now going to dive into these principles in a little more detail. So first of all, in order to identify and fix flaws in your process, you need to know what your current state is. And one way to visualize your current state is to visualize your workflow using a Kanban board. A lot of the major work tracking tools such as Jira allow you to visualize your work in this way. And it doesn't matter whether you're working in Scrum or any other form of Agile. Kanban boards can be extremely useful to allow you to get a true picture of how your team is working and what the process is. In the past, Kanban boards have helped me to identify whether members of the team have too many tasks in progress at once, which is always a risk because they're then context switching, or whether a specific role, for example, me as a tester, has too many tasks assigned to them and isn't going to get through that work. A Kanban board is a great thing to suggest to your team to help visualize your workflow. And now that you've identified a, a flaw in your workflow using Kanban, you can raise this as a concern. A lean technique that I've used with teams in the past is that of a three C's board. The three C's stand for concern, cause and countermeasure. These boards have been so valuable to me over the past couple of years and can be set up using several online collaboration tools such as Miro or Trello. So let's work through a real world example of how a concern would progress through the three C's board. For example, I have a concern that I'm not gonna be able to get through all of my testing tasks in the sprint. As a team, we get together and talk about this concern. What could the cause be? After talking through the concern, we agree that the root cause is that I'm only able to start testing tasks halfway through our two week sprint as that's when the work gets delivered to me. We begin to talk about a potential countermeasure. What could we do to remove this concern? We agree as a team that a potential countermeasure could be me getting involved in early iterations of what the developers are working on, pair with developers and begin to test these early iterations. We don't know if this countermeasure is gonna work. The point of the three C's board is to identify a potential countermeasure and experiment with that. So we agreed to try this countermeasure for a couple of sprints. And if this countermeasure doesn't remove the concern, then we'll add it back onto the board after a couple of sprints. So I really hope that this quick example highlights the value of a three C's board and, in, and can encourage you to set one up with your team. It means that everyone is constantly thinking towards a solution when concerns are raised. The later the problems in software are caught, the more expensive they are to fix. I used to be delighted when I found bugs in our test environment because it meant that the issue could be resolved by developers and released in the next sprint. And the customer wasn't going to experience buggy software. Now, when I find bugs in the test environment, I'm quite disappointed. Why didn't we catch this issue earlier? How could we have prevented this bug? This now needs to go back to the beginning of our workflow to be reworked or fixed when I find issues in the test environment. So I've began to change the way that I work so that we have less rework and can accelerate the achievement of shippable quality by finding problems early. So how can we prevent problems from happening and that rework needing done? 
I've had a lot of success in collaborating with the team as early as possible. This includes asking questions of the product manager um, as early as possible. So asking questions such as who do we expect to use this? How will we know that this uh, functionality is going to be a success? And that the answer to these questions can help you inform the design of the functionality that you're working on. And it also helps the team gain a shared understanding of what it is you're working on. I found in my experience, a number of bugs are raised due to misunderstandings of requirements within the team. I also like to pair with developers as early as possible. I wasn't always code confident, but even when I wasn't, I could sit with them as they wrote unit tests and ask about different scenarios. What if a user does this? Do we throw the correct errors when errors occur? These sessions help us prevent bugs being deployed to any environment as we're testing as the code has been written and as that functionality has been designed. And it allows me to explore the functionality of the software at an extremely early stage of development. Finally, I believe it is important to share your test and knowledge within the team and often act as a test coach. Having done this in the past, it does change the responsibilities of your role, but it definitely helps your team accelerate the achievement of shippable quality. One lean principle I use to guide this is to build quality at source. In my opinion, it should be the person that's building the functionality who is responsible for the quality. This often might require input from someone else, but the person creating the functionality should, should feel ownership from beginning to end. One example of how I enable this within the team is to pair with developers as I wrote automated integration or end-to-end -end tests. Developers are skilled coders, because it's what they do every day. So it didn't take long before they got a good idea of our test framework. The bonus of this was that they could soon write their own tests that would be run in our pipeline. So initially we worked together to define these tests, but over time, the developers began to know what they should and shouldn't be testing. And as I mentioned in the previous section, I also paired with developers as they wrote unit tests. As well as helping to identify issues earlier, it also helped them understand the mindset that I approached testing with. By asking questions and thinking outside the box, I was exposing developers to my mindset. And eventually, when developers were pairing together, I would hear them ask questions that I would be asking at this in this stage. So all of this, the exposure to my mindset and pairing with developers early and sharing the testing knowledge, it all helped build quality in its source and prevented the need for rework further down the line, or it prevented the need for them to throw work over the wall to me to be tested they now felt ownership of the quality of their code. So thank you very much for listening to my Atomic talk at TestFlix. And I hope you enjoyed it and took something away from it. And I hope you've got ideas for experiments that you can try with your own teams. If you've got any questions or would like to discuss anything further, then please reach out to me on Twitter. My handle is on this slide. Thank you very much.